The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship at North Raleigh Presbyterian Church. Whatever day it is, whatever time it is, whatever you're wearing below the belt, <laughs> welcome to worship. We are glad to have you here. Pajamas are always welcome. Um, a few announcements as we gather for worship. First, if you're a visitor in our midst, a word of welcome to you. We are glad you are part of our worship again, wherever and, and um, wherever you are joining us. Uh, if you would let us know that you've joined us, that would be great. We would love to be able to extend a personal word of welcome to you. Uh, if you've got your bulletin or if you have looked at Friday News, um, or maybe if you check out the new Now at NRPC tab that's on our website, you can find all kinds of information about the way this congregation will worship, grow, and serve together in the coming days. Let me highlight a couple of the things that are coming up this week. Um, well, first, let me look back. Ma Max, last week, was uh, tailgating in our parking lot, and it was a delight. So look for that when it comes back up in a couple of weeks. Meanwhile, Max at Home will be happening this coming Wednesday. The Tuesday morning women's Bible study will be restarting um, outdoors, in person, here at church um, this Tuesday at 1030. Movie night is coming up on Thursday this coming week. One announcement that didn't make the bulletin because we were still working out the details. Next Sunday, the 27th, uh, between 6.30 and 7 p.m., we will bring out the Canvas Labyrinth that belongs to North Raleigh Presbyterian. We'll set it up out here in the parking lot and would invite you to come and take a meditative, prayerful walk through that labyrinth. Uh, if, it is, if there is precipitation, then we will not be bringing that labyrinth out. So um, if your hand gets wet and you're standing outside, it's not happening. If your hand stays dry, it's happening. Um, join us for that prayerful gathering outdoors. Now, my friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please join me in the call to worship. You will see the responses at the bottom of your screen. Draw near to the Lord who hears our pleas and our praise. We come to rest in God's holy presence. Here is the bread that the Lord provides. Here is manna to nourish our souls. We gather to feast on God's sustaining word. Remember the Lord's wonderful works each evening. See God's glory with the morning's light. Come, let us worship God.
we'll hear in just a minute in both of our Old Testament and New Testament lessons about God's abundant grace in our lives and in the lives of people who we would say don't deserve abundant grace. And when we come down to it, I think that we would agree that that's the truth, is that we think that we are deserving of God's abundant grace, and that we can also judge who's not deserving of God's abundant grace. So let us go before God together again and ask for that abundant grace, not just for ourselves, but especially for those who we think don't deserve it, knowing that God gives each of us abundant grace in Jesus Christ. Let us do it first in silence. Amen. Let us continue to confess in one voice. You'll see the words at the bottom of your screen. Lord, your generosity surprises us. For you do not mete out grace according to how hard we work, or how often we worship, or how closely we follow the rules. No, you lavish grace upon us according to your own desire. But we insist on deciding who is deserving and who is not. We grumble that some receive too little, while others have more than they deserve. Forgive us, we pray. Help us to live with humility and gratitude, so that our words and deeds might embody your grace. Amen. We have indeed received God's abundant grace, and the beautiful thing is that each person, those who think they deserve it and those who know that they do not deserve it, have received God's abundant grace. And so I hope that this morning you can hear and receive this good news, no matter if you think you deserve it or if you know you don't, that in the name of Jesus Christ, we are loved and accepted, forgiven and freed. Thanks be to God. And since God has given us abundant grace, let us also be abundantly gracious to one another. And we can do that by sharing peace with one another. So may the peace of Christ be with you. Our first lesson is from Exodus, chapter 16, at verse 2. In preparation for hearing God's word, let us pray. Let the wisdom of your word rain down on us like manna and feed us, that we may be strengthened to do the work to which we are called. Amen. Listen with me for what the Spirit says. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, 
Say to the whole congregation of Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fly, fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Our gospel lesson today continues our engagement with Matthew's gospel. Our lesson begins at chapter 20 at the beginning. Listen with me for what the Spirit says. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them to the vineyard. Now, when he went out at about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went and he went out again about noon and about three o'clock and he did the same thing. Then at about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard. Now when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. 
And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and its scorching heat? But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you. I choose to give you, to give to this last the same as I gave to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Friends, from Exodus and from Matthew, the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's time to share the faith with the younger church. So if you consider yourself a part of the younger church, I hope that you will listen up because this story out of our Spark Bible is for you. It's the story of the vineyard workers, which is the story out of Matthew that Lisa just read to us. So here we go. Jesus told this story to teach about God. A farmer needed workers for his vineyard where he grew grapes. Will you work in my vineyard? He asked some people. Well, how much are you going to pay? They answered. One day's pay, the farmer said. Okay, said the people, and they went to work. The, the farmer hired other workers at different times all day. When they were done, the farmer paid all of the workers the same. The first workers were angry. You paid the last workers the same as us, they shouted. We worked longer in the hot, hot sun. The farmer answered, I gave you what I promised you. Are you upset? Because I'm being generous to the others? Jesus said that God is generous like the farmer. The last will be first. And the first will be last with God, Jesus said. I love that story so much. One of my favorite stories in all of the Gospels. That God gives grace equally to each person. Those who are first and those who are last. I hope that we can remember that and live it out some way this week. Let's end our time together by putting our hands together like we always do, and then bring it down and say together, thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray together. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, can you imagine the payroll queue at the end of that workday? It's 6 p.m. and the workers are all lined up, last in, first out. The folks who'd worked just an hour are at the front of the line. Those midday hires are bunched up in the middle. And the ones who'd been there since sunup, they're bringing up the rear. They're literally lined up so that the last are first and the first are last. And I wonder, I wonder what the conversation was like after that day's payroll was doled out. What would we hear from someone who'd been at the back of the line or from someone somewhere near in the middle of the line? And what might, might we hear from someone who was way up there in the front of the line? Maybe something like this would come from the rear. I do not have words for how, what, disappointed, stunned, outraged I am. I can hardly put words together. I was raised to believe in personal responsibility. You do your work, you take care of your own, you put in your time and you get paid accordingly. If everyone would just do their part, and everything would work out just fine. Thank you very much. 
So I'm always up well before dawn. I am the first one to the marketplace every day without fail. First one there, always ready to begin my work, ready to put in a full day's labor. Most of the foremen around here know me. They know that I work hard. They know that I finish what I start. I'm not one of those who causes trouble. And no one, no one has to tell me twice what it is I need to do. I'm a quick study, an asset to any crew I join. Folks are glad to have me working for them. I'm a responsible worker and I expect and I deserve to be paid accordingly. And what happened today, what happened today was an absolute travesty, a perversion of anyone's sense of justice. As I was saying, I was at the marketplace early today, first to arrive, of course, and plenty of others came along in those first few moments of the day. I had to stay alert, I tell you, alert in order to preserve my place as first in line. No slacker is going to get my job. It's a little bit surprised that it was the landowner himself who came to select laborers for the day. He usually sends one of his managers. So I stood up extra tall when I recognized the man and, and when I could catch his eye, I gave him a little, a little nod so he'd know of my respect. So he called me out along with a couple of others and we stepped away from the fray of all the hopefuls. What does the manager usually pay, or pay you? The landowner asked. I piped up quickly, a denarius for a day's work is typical, sir. He nodded at me and said, thank you. And will that be sufficient payment for today? He looked at all of us. Are we all in agreement? He asked. Now, to tell you the truth, we were not accustomed to this much conversation about our pay, but we nodded our assent and he told us to report to the manager in the field. Now, I don't know about you, but work, work is such a fulfilling thing to do with the labor of my hands, with these very hands, barren land produces grain, grain to feed so many people. With the labor of my hands, with these hands, I am able to provide all that my family needs. It's so very satisfying to be so self-sufficient. We may not live a wealthy life at our house, but I take good care of my own. Today was a good day of work. It was a long day of work and a hard day of work. Twelve hours, twelve hours of hot and dusty labor in the fields. Grueling, yes, but oh, so very satisfying. That's what I was thinking when I was sent to the back of the line to collect my wage. At first, that was a very confusing instruction. It would seem to me that those of us who had worked the longest and the hardest, mind you, it would seem that we should be paid first. I was hot, I was tired, I was sweaty, I was ready to be home. Then I noticed that the landowner was beginning by paying all the latecomers, <laughs> the slackers, the ones who worked only an hour in the fields, if that. He was, he was paying the ne'er-do-wells first. This made no sense to me. I began talking with the others there at the back of the line. It was as though he was pandering to the freeloaders. What in the world? Soon, though, a report of the payment scheme made its way down the line to us. We learned that the shirkers were being paid a full day's wage. It was preposterous, of course. Those who had worked even as little as an hour, one hour out of a 12-hour work day, the idlers were getting paid for a full day of work. We could not figure out why in the world they'd be getting paid so much, but maybe, just maybe, we would be receiving quite the bonus for a full day's work. An hour's work earned a day's wage. Maybe we'd be getting 12 days wages. 
for our 12 hours work. That would be only fair, right? That would be the honest way to have paid us. We spent so much time talking amongst ourselves that we didn't realize how those in the middle of the line were being paid. Next thing we knew, all of us who had labored since the day began, my friends and I who had put in a full 12 hour work day, we were at the front of the line ready to receive the pay commensurate with the work we'd done. What we got was one measly denarius apiece. That's what the man handed us. He, the same pay that he'd given to the lazy lot who worked only one hour. Can you believe it? Ah, ah, who was paid the same amount that an indolent 11th hour lightweight was paid. Where is the justice in that? I was and still am outraged. A few of the guys around me were saying we ought to be satisfied with what we were paid. They were recalling that we had agreed to one denarius for the day's work. I told them loudly and I told them clearly that we had been hornswoggled into that agreement. That when I said yes to one denarius, I had no idea, no idea that the freeloaders would get the same payment for a measly hour's worth of work. No one in their right mind would say yes to such lopsided terms. We were made to look like absolute fools. I looked like a chump stretching my hand out for that pittance of a wage, hot and sweaty, sunburned and parched after toiling away for hours and hours. Who does that landowner think he is, thumbing his nose at everything that is decent and fair? whole scheme is an absolute disgrace. I wish I'd spit in his face. Then there's the murmur from the middle of the pack, probably less impassioned to be sure, probably less verbose as well. You know, so often the middle of the pack is rather more indifferent than anything else. Listen, weird thing happened when we finished our work day today. I guess I should say half work day. Nobody hired me till noon. Actually, the landowner himself hired me around lunchtime. Struck me as kind of strange that he'd be the one rounding up day laborers, but whatever. He told us to trust him to pay what was right. It was gonna be what it was gonna be anyway. So we all said, sure, headed for the fields. Once we'd wrapped up the day's work, he called us over to be paid. He, he'd kept on bringing in workers right up until the last few minutes of the day. Another odd cho choice, it's his farm, his money. Anyway, he called us over and said we should all line up with the ones who'd put in the fewest hours at the front of the line and all the ones who'd worked the longest at the back hired me at noon. I'd be in the middle of the group either way. No big deal, even if it did seem odd. You know, the guys up at the front, the ones who'd had an hour or even less of work, they got a full day's wage. Lucky for them, I suppose. Turned out my half day of work was worth the same, a denarius. Fine by me. Work is work. Pay is pay. Whatever. Then there is the possibility of a story from the front of the line. What a day this has been. Heaven has smiled on me and words cannot contain my gratitude. The words of the psalmist have been ringing in my spirit all day long. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known God's deeds among the peoples. Sing to God, sing praises to the Lord, tell of all God's wonderful works. Glory is the holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Now I've got to tell you, the end of my day was particularly good, but let me tell you about my whole day. I was up before the sun rose, as usual. My mother 
is all the family I have, and she is unwell, unable to do more than tend our fire. As I woke up again, singing out to my mother, rousing her from her sleep, you, you see her body is worn and slow, but I encouraged her to be up and glad for another day. Once she stirred a bit, I took our goat to the hillside to graze. Without her milk, we would starve, to be sure. That goat is such good company, too, and tending her gives me a chance to watch the sun be begin that march across the sky. It is such a gift to see the new day begin and to imagine what else the day will bring. By the time the sun was above the horizon, I headed home to be sure my mother was ready for her day. We used the last of our oil and a handful of flour. There would be flat, flat bread with our goat milk today. What a blessing. Of course, I, I saved half my milk portion to sell to one of the workers I'd meet later in the marketplace. Mother does not need to know that, mind you. But if there was to be oil enough for tomorrow, or flour for next week, I would need more than our few pennies to make those purchases. Mother and I did agree that we'd save a few crumbs of our flatbread for the widow along the road, too. What little we have feels like bounty to us, and we are so glad for the chance to share. And so I began the long trip to the marketplace. You see, we are not able to live closer to down the best use of our meager means is to camp in the desert. It takes a while longer to get where all the action is, but I, I also get to see how the desert plants thrive. And I see all of the animals scurry ahead of me along the path. By the time I got to the marketplace, lots of workers were already in the fields. I busied myself as best I could. I swept some stalls in trade for a handful of olives. I, I ran errands for some of the sellers, a penny a trip. And I made quick visits to thank some of the people who helped us earlier this month when I too was unable to work. I made very sure to be at the center of the marketplace at noon and then again at three. Even a partial day's wages would keep us fed for another day. But I am smaller and younger than the other workers, and so I'm often overlooked, or at best chosen last. I try my best, but I am just not as strong as the others. By five o'clock, the better part of sense told me that I should just go on home. I was glad for the few olives I'd been given and given for the sweeping, and I was grateful for a few more pennies that might someday add up to enough for another jug of oil. But as I stood there, finally idle after a day of fetching and sweeping and visiting, as I stood there, the landowner sought me out and sent me to his fields. I went, of course. I had no idea what the work could possibly be at such a late hour and I had no clue what I might be paid for, or quite frankly, whether I might be paid. The landowner said, go, though. So I said, yes, sir, thank you. And off I went. Turns out my small hands are rather well suited for tying up the bales that the other workers had gathered all day long. I cannot lift and haul as they can, but I am glad to tie the knots it would only be an hour's worth of work, but even an hour's worth of pay would stretch our pennies farther. I could almost taste the bread we would bake, delicious yeast bread this time. And I was so very grateful. And the twelfth hour came, and it was time for the workers to be paid. I lurked at the back of the crowd. It would only be right for me to be paid out of anything that remained after all the others had been paid. I was the last to arrive at the fields. It would only be right for me to be paid last. The landowner called me to the front of the line. All I'd done was put the final knots in the bales. Why would I be invited to be first in the wage line? It was great. I was grateful to be noticed, though. I couldn't wait to get home to tell my mother that I'd earned a whole hour's worth worth of wages, more than we'd seen for, well, for a very long time. 
When I got to the front of the line, though, that landowner handed me a whole denarius, an entire day's wages. Can you believe it? I had never, never seen so much money at once in my whole life. I looked at what was in my hand, and then I looked at that landowner. Something did not seem right about this. Sir, I, I was going to remind him how he'd only hired me an hour before that I had in no way earned a full day's wage. He smiled at me, cupped his hands around mine and said, go in peace. I dared to look at him full in the face. And when I did, the words that had been ringing within me all day, well, they came spilling out of my mouth. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on God's name. Make known the Lord's deeds among the people. Sing to God. Sing praises to the Lord. Tell of all God's wonderful works. Glory in the holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Friends, kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This week, we continue through the Confession of 1967. Let us say together what we believe. God's sovereign love is a mystery beyond the reach of the human mind, Human thought ascribes to God superlatives of power, wisdom, and goodness, but God reveals divine love in Jesus Christ by showing power in the form of a servant, wisdom in the folly of the cross, and goodness in receiving sinful men and women. The power of God's love in Christ to transform the world discloses that the Redeemer is the Lord and Creator who made all things to serve the purpose of God's love. Our invitation to discipleship this morning is to get involved in some form of faith formation this fall. I know that it is weird with lots of faith formation happening online, um, but I know that there are lots of wonderful opportunities for adult faith formation here at North Raleigh. We have three adult Sunday school classes that I would love to tell you about. We have the Pioneer Group, and they will be reading ta Coates' book, Between the World and Me, and they meet on Tuesdays through Zoom. We have the Cornerstone class. They do the present word, which is Bible-based, and they meet on Sundays through Skype. We have the CSI Group. Um, and they are doing a series of TED Talks and talking about faith uh, through the lens of uh, various TED Talks together. And they meet through Skype on Sunday mornings. If you would want more information about any of those classes, I would love to tell you about it because it is a great way in this season where you can engage in faith formation. We have faith formation for all ages as well. For youth, that is happening on Sunday nights during youth group. We meet twice a month. For children, that's happening on Max. That's on Wednesdays for the next eight weeks. We also have the men's Bible study, which meets through Zoom on Friday mornings. And I would love to tell you about that as well. And we have the Tuesday morning Bible study, which uh, Candy Tedrick leads and they will be going through the book of Matthew. So there are lots and lots of opportunity for faith formation, including uh, Sunday school options for you during this season in our life. And I would invite you to engage in discipleship by forming your faith with one of these groups of people from NRPC. And as a sign, as our dedication to discipleship, let us bring to God our tithes and our offerings, knowing that all that we are and all that we have belongs to God. Amen. Grateful for God's mercies, let us pray for the needs of the world. When you hear me say, Lord, in your mercy, then let us say together, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. 
Holy God, who hears our cries, who empathizes with our groans, you are ever faithful. We come to you with our petitions, petitions for ourselves, for our community, and for our world. We pray, O oh God, for our church and for its leaders, that they would be of open mind and open heart, that they might display the kingdom as you have called them to do, and that your church would be an instrument of love, justice, peace, and generosity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for our country and our global community, that all may be peaceful, fair, and respectful of all peoples, no matter what religion or color, what gender or kind of government. We pray, O oh God, that you would send righteous leaders to us, leaders who would be merciful and gracious. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for our local community and for communities all around this country. We pray for those places where protest still roils, where people live in fear and where others live in fear of becoming invisible. We pray for those who are living in the risk of wildfires, for those who have already lost home and all belongings, even as we pray for those who fight fires and who come to alleviate the suffering. We pray as well, O oh God, for those who are this day victims of natural disaster in the way of weather. We pray that they would find shelter and that they would find peace. Lead your church to meet these needs of so many who are oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, O oh God, we pray for those who are overlooked in our society, for the poor, for the young, for the old, for the unwell, for the bereaved, indeed for the oppressed. Help us to see them. Help us to see you in them. Help us to be with them and help us to serve them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we know that you hear us. We know that you love us and we know that you are for us. And we thank you. We thank you beyond what words can say. Offering all of these prayers in the strong name of Christ, who has taught us to pray and to say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
uh, with my moderator of the Presbytery hat on, I was a part of an ordination and installation service at Cotton Memorial Presbyterian Church in Henderson. It was a delightful day. Uh, in the midst of that service, we who were gathered there were reminded of the great ends of the church. And one of those great ends sprung to mind as I was writing this way, this week. The church is called to exhibit the kingdom of heaven to the world. Now friends, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner, a landowner who went out to call workers into his vineyard. Go out from this worship to be like that landowner with everyone whom you meet. And as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with mercy and grant you peace, deep peace. Peace enough for debt today and every day.